Okay, so welcome back everybody to our second lecture today, our BC 213, the end time is going through the introduction. Let me go ahead and share the notes here. Look at it. All right, so we were on point number seven um, in the introduction here, uh, talking about you know, our approach to studying the end times. Um, and we mentioned about uh, recognizing different time frames, right? So that means uh, we used, you know, for example, Isaiah 90, verse 6 and 7, how in one verse of scripture, a different time frame is being referenced. Similarly, you'll find uh, in Isaiah 65, um, Isaiah is prophesying about new heavens and the new earth. He talks about new heavens and new earth, and then suddenly he starts talking about the lion lying down with the lamb and people dying. A man will live for a hundred years and die, and so on. So then we recognize that he's actually talking about two different time frames. Why? Because in the new heavens and the new earth, we know there will be no more death. Correct. So when he talks about people dying, the lion lying down with the lamb, uh, and so on, then, oh, that is the millennium. That is not the new heavens and the new earth. But it's all given in one passage, in Isaiah 65, 17. So then we recognize, oh, Isaiah 65, 17, 18, 19, three verses, that's about new heavens and the new earth. Whereas the rest of it is talking about the millennium. And we, you know, so we have to be careful how we interpret the passage. And then, because Isaiah has already spoken of the millennium in Isaiah 11, also in Isaiah, I think, chapter 2, he talks about, you know, the millennium, the lion lying down the lamb, and so on. So, again, we need to, you know, in that same passage, there are two different time periods he's referring to. Another, another thing we'll see in prophetic scripture is there is dual fulfillment, near and far fulfillment. Um, there is um, the, especially when it comes to the regathering of Israel, there is the near fulfillment that means God's people did come back to their own land uh, right after the um, Babylonian captivity, 70 years. They were in captives in Babylon, they did come back. But there's a far fulfillment, which, which is God regathering and reestablishing his people in their own land, giving them their own identity. Which, when we look back, we can see that, okay, in the year 1948, Israel became a nation. They had their own land once again. You know, so there was a near fulfillment during the time of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. When they were there, they prophesied that, um, uh, you know, uh, Israel will be taken captive for 70 years, they will return to the land. So that, that was fulfilled. But there's also a long-term far fulfillment, which, which took more than 2,000 years later. After the people with the Jews were dispersed, Israel were dis dispersed from the land, God brought them back and gathered them to their own land, which we are seeing today. So there's both a near and a far fulfillment. Number nine, uh, we uh, remain open. Uh, to possible unexpected ways for fulfillment in scripture that not yet been fulfilled. For example, uh, in Revelation 13, uh, John says that the Antichrist, he refers to as the beast, and there's a false prophet. When they are operating on the earth, they cause every man to receive a mark, which is 666 either on their hand or on their foreheads. Now, he doesn't tell us how it will be done. He only says, they will be forced to receive the mark of the beast. How? We don't know. So sometimes you can say, oh, uh, so, so many as technology has evolved, uh, people have said, oh, you know, they will put a microchip in your finger. Oh, they will put a mark on some, Skin, skin, or whatever. So, 
There could be many different ways in how this can happen. Okay? So we're open to that. We only know that Revelation 13, John has said, this Antichrist and the false prophet, they will operate in such a way that they will force people to receive the mark of the beast. And without that mark, you cannot buy your self. How are they going to do? We don't know. What technology they will use? We don't know. Today, there's technology. Tomorrow, there could be something else. So just be open. And like that, you see in Revelation 17, Revelation 18. In Revelation 17, we talk about, we see about uh, uh, what we refer to as a world religious system set in place by the false prophet. And that will collapse. Uh, then we see about uh, Revelation 18, a world economic system that collapses. So we know that these things can happen today, but exactly how it will happen, it can happen in many different ways. In how a global economic system can collapse. It can happen in many different ways. So, like that, um, uh, there, there are many, you know, the different things that we see in scripture which, which, which are not yet fulfilled, but it could be fulfilled in many different ways. We just stay open. To and last point is that we, are, we, we, we accept that our understanding of certain end time prophecies is not 100% sure. Like, okay, this is what we, uh, we know for you know, the best we can, but exactly who, how it's going to happen, we don't know. For example, again, in Revelation 16, uh, uh, John writes about the army, the kings of the east will begin to come against Israel. Kings of the east. So we don't know. He just mentions kings of the east. That means east of Jerusalem, east of Israel. They will come. Who could they be? We don't know. But we think, oh, okay, who are the big armies from the east? So they could, could be China. You know, because they're a big army um, coming in. Uh, and there could be other Arab nations east of Israel for all moving together. Right? So we don't know for sure, but the Bible says kings of the east. So all the, any of these nations, we, it's, we would say, yeah, because China is such a powerful nation. And because they are aligning themselves with other countries who, who may not be supporting Israel, or maybe China is one of these countries. And he also mentions about uh, in Revelation, you see about uh, uh, 200 million, he mentions, so 200, not 200 million, 200,000 uh, uh, these, these creatures that are going in and causing death. So it's like an army of 200,000 people. Uh, who would have such a big army? Yeah. Okay, China already exceeds that. They have a bigger army than so, you know, so we're not hundred percent sure, but we think right, that because of these numbers, and so, oh, okay, China could be coming against us. So, like that, we say, you know, our understanding of certain prophecies is not definitely not hundred percent sure, but we can think, we can say, yeah, because of what he is saying, it could be these countries or these things. So, like that, we do. So, whenever we're not hundred percent sure, but we say, like, you know, because of some information. We think it would be this. We will say that we think it is that. Okay? Not, not necessarily 100% sure. So, uh, one last, uh, last, some last thoughts in the introduction is um, uh, some things that we don't subscribe to. There is what is uh, known as pre terrorism, which means uh, there is this belief, or there are some, I want to say, some people who believe that all these prophecies were already fulfilled in the first century. Okay, it's already happened. Uh, so, no, 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 we, we don't believe that. And as we go through this course, we'll understand why so many things have not yet been fulfilled. Uh, another thing that we also don't believe is what generally is referred to as dominion theology, which is that um, the dominion, dominion theology with some people, Christians, subscribe to is that the church must take dominion of everything on the earth. 
Uh, so when they talk about uh, Christ ruling on the earth, they interpret it as the church taking position of dominion over everything on the earth. So they say, okay, the presidents and the prime ministers, they must all be Christians. Must all, you know. So that is where this dominion theology is going on towards. And we don't want to leave that because right now we believe in the church age, our responsibility is to disciple nations. Jesus said, go and make disciples. He didn't say, go and become kings. <laughs> go and make In the millennium, he, the kingdom will be given to the saints. That is Daniel chapter 7 and 1 Corinthians 6. In the millennium, that time we will rule and reign with Jesus. Not now. Now our responsibility is to go and preach the gospel, make disciples, save so, win so. That is our work now. In the millennium, we will rule and reign with Jesus. Not now. Right? So dominion theology brings that now. So oh, now you have to rule and reign. So now you have to become president, prime minister, and uh, you have to become a king. So they push on. So, uh, so we don't subscribe. Uh, just to clarify that, don't confuse these things. Okay. So before we actually get started, any questions so far until now in the introduction? There will be a lot of things we're going to talk about definitely as we get into the course. Uh, any questions as far as the introduction is concerned? Everyone's fine? Yes, Francis. Yeah. So when will judgment happen? So there are two judgments. One is referred to as what we will refer to as the believer's judgment. This is judgment for the believer, on the believers. That happens. That's so Paul writes about this in Second Corinthians chapter five, and also in First Corinthians chapter three. This is a judgment for believers to give them rewards for their work. It is not for salvation. They're already saved. They're already in heaven. But what is this judge, believer's judgment? It is for the works you have done. So Paul says, in every one of our works will be tested by fire. Awards are it is with this gold, silver, or precious stones, or did we do with works of the flesh? You know, our works will be tested by fire. Uh, so second Corinthians chapter five says we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of what we have done in our body. He's talking about the believers. So this is not for salvation. This is for the work we have done. And then each one will man, each one will get a reward according to the work that they have done. So that will happen during the seven years of tribulation while we are all in heaven. Okay. So we are taken up into heaven. That is when the believer's judgment will happen. Each one will receive a reward. Then there is the great white throne. That is a different judgment. That is the last and final judgment for every human being. So in Revelation chapter 20, end of the chapter, 14, 15, 16. John is writing. He says, I saw basically God sitting on the great white throne and all the books are open. And every living person, every person who has ever lived, will stand before. At that time, remember, believers already saved. So it is not a judgment for us. We are already the sheep. The sheep and the goats are already separated. But this is like the final chapter. Everybody stands before the great white throne. And whoever's, whosoever name is not written in the book of life, in the Lamb's book of life, is cast into the lake of So that is the great white throne. That is the last thing that will happen at the end of the millennium. End of the thousand year reign of Jesus. End of the great white throne. 
Right after that, Revelation 21 and 22 means new heavens and the new. So that is a so two judges. One is for believers. The second one is a great white throne judgment. Great white throne judgment. So all the people for believers, we are already saved. We will already be on the right hand side. Meaning we will already be the sheep. But the goats will be separated. Meaning the, those who are not saved. Uh, yeah, so the great white throne judgment is again, we're already saved. We're already see the, the thing is this the moment somebody becomes a believer, and Jesus says, He believes in me, he has already passed from death to like I think let me it's John 5 24. I think it is. Let me just uh, so that means in, in one sense we are already uh, gone John John chapter 5 verse 20. Yeah. Um most assuredly I say to you, he John 5 24, he who hears my word and believes in him who has sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death into life that means already you are on the safe side i mean you're not going to be judged as in being sent to heaven and so in that sense uh, when we become believers we are already in the like we are past judgment we are passed from death to so it is already done. So I would say, I mean, if, if, if I can use the word, that great my throne judgment for us believers is more like a formality. Yeah, you're standing there, but you're not going to be condemned because he says you all you will not come into judgment. You already passed. But Revelation twenty, every living person will stand before. But the, Believers have already passed. There's no fear. There's no sense of, oh, will I pass or not? What, what, is, my, what is my result? <laughs> that fear is not there. Huh? So that's why uh, John writes, uh, John 5, I think, verse 14. He says, uh, We have no fear in judgments because perfect love has cast out all. I mean, on the judgment day, there is no fear because we're already on, um, on, on the place where there is perfect love and space love. And it's also like uh, we know, like when we get new bodies, mm. is it when we go through rapture? Mm -hmm. Is it after the new talent when the Part of the new and the new one that's when we get the new body. So we see uh, we see this in two stages. I would like to say yeah, two stages. One is uh, at the rapture of the church. So we'll be going through all this. I'm just answering your question because sometimes we'll hear it many times and you'll understand it clearly. Uh, at the rapture of the church, first Corinthians chapter 15. First Thessalonians chapter 4, both describe it that at that moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when Jesus descends, okay, those who have died and fallen asleep, they will come, the spirits will come with Jesus and they will receive glorified bodies. And we who are alive, if we are alive at that time, our bodies will be changed in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye. Mortal will put on immortality. Our bodies will become just as he is, his body, his glorified body. So that is the first, what we call uh, the uh, first time when we are going to receive glorified our bodies. But remember, life on earth is continuing. Tribulation is going on. It will start and go on. People will be born. People will be saved. During the tribulation, <laughs> what happened? 
People are being born. People are also being saved during the Jubilee. Those see, the church will go away, but see now how many billions of people are there on the earth, right? I want to say eight billion people. Certain percentage of believers are gone now. The rest are left on the earth. And they're going to go to the tribulation. During the tribulation, lots of people will be saved. They'll see oh, what happened to the church. They will then go and listen to our videos. <laughs> That time they'll go and read the books. Oh, these people were saying, right? But you know, when you look at when you read Revelation, there'll also be a lot of people who will be very angry with God. They will not repent in spite of everything. They will not repent. So you have both sides. There will be people who will repent. There will be people who will not repent. But there will be people who will be saved during the tribulation. Okay? So at the end of the tribulation, Revelation chapter 20 says, tells us that there will be more people who will be resurrected than those who died during the tribulation. People, lots of people will die during the tribulation because of the faith in Jesus. They'll be killed. So there will, there's one more resurrection there. Okay. At the end of the tribulation, they will receive glorified bodies. What most likely is going to happen is Revelation 14 talks about the 144,000 Jews. They are caught up into heaven. Okay. So we don't know for sure whether they're going to be killed and go up to heaven and resurrect and go up to heaven or whether they're directly going to be translated to heaven. But they will also receive glorified bodies. Very true. In the middle of the tribulation, Revelation 14. So that is one reason why some people believe in the middle, mid-tribulation rapture of the church because of this 144,000 Jews being caught up into heaven. And uh, so they will also receive glorified body. So you have, you know, we have the rapture of the church, we have 144,000 Jews, middle of the tribulation. At the end of the tribulation of Revelation 20, we have some more people being resurrected, receiving the of bodies. And all of it will be, we will now move into the millennium. So in the millennium, you'll have two kinds of people. You'll have the saints, believers, who will be on the earth with glorified bodies. That means our bodies are mortal, they won't die. But you'll also have natural humans on the earth because there are people who are going to continue from the tribulation, they'll continue on into the millennium. So that's why Isaiah 60 says, The child who is born will live 100 years. That means during the millennium, there will be people who are born on the earth. And during the millennium, they need to be taught the word of God. Zechariah 14. We have to teach them. The word of God. So we will see or we'll study the light in the millennium. These things will happen. And the Bible describes all these things. Okay, so to answer your question, you have up to the church and end of the tribulation, more people are being raised. So it's like people who came into faith during the tribulation, they are again. Right. And then finally, in Revelation 20, every living being will be raised up. The sea will give up the dead. Wherever people have died, they'll all be raised up. Now, that resurrection, we don't know whether uh, what kind of bodies they will have. Meaning, we're going to have glorified bodies like the body of Jesus that we know. The Bible states that we will be like him when we see him as he is. But in the resurrection, Revelation 20, before the great battle of Jezreel, where every living person is raised up, what kind of bodies would they have in each? Mm -hmm. After, like, when we are talking about the like, same body, uh, do you think in the literal sense or the physical? It's a literal sense because it's going to be like the body of Jesus. So, what do we know about the body of Jesus? The resurrected body of Jesus. Could Peter touch him? 
uh, could John Thomas touch him? Jesus told Thomas, Thomas, put your finger in my hand. So if it was just some spiritual thing, Thomas is the where should I put <laughs> He won't know. But says, Thomas, touch me. See, because a spirit does not have body and bone. But Jesus is telling Thomas, Thomas, you touch me. He also sat down and he made breakfast for the, with them. Remember, he was walking down the road with them, yes, with the other two disciples. He sat down with them. That means it was very literal. You could see it, but it was very different. It could pass through walls. It could just suddenly just move, disappear. So it is a different kind of a body. It is not the natural body that we know, right? Our natural body is flesh and blood. It is. It will corrupt. It will decay. But that resurrected body can be touched, it can be felt, and yet at the same time, it's made of something different material and it can pass through walls and can just move in an instant. Is it possible that Jesus was resurrected before his body was removed? Of, of. So when our body, physical bodies will decompose. Yeah. So God is going to clothe our spirits with that immortal body. Like I, I, I'm just using the word immortal, or with the body just like Jesus. Now we can be just using a, term, a glorified body. Right? What material that is, it is not. Uh, the same chemical material that this physical body. So he's not he's not going to put that thing. It is something different. It's glorified. Like the body of Jesus. But you can recognize it. So the disciples recognize Jesus. You can touch it. Yet at the same time it can disappear. So after the church is captured and yet we come back in India Yes, for the thousand years. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh no, on oh, oh, no. oh, no. mm. We will rule and reign with Jesus on the earth for a thousand years. Right? Revelation chapter 20. Right? Also First Corinthians chapter 6. Where are we going to rule and reign with him? You can look at it. Also in Daniel chapter 7. So Revelation 20. See verse 4 onwards. And I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the witness to Jesus and for the word of God. I have not worshipped the beast or his image. and have not received his mark on their foreheads on their hands. And they live and reign with Christ for the thousand years. Years. So they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And then, verse 7, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be his prison and go to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. So that's, it's all happening here on earth. Okay. You also see in 1 Corinthians 6, um, Paul writes, it says, We will judge angels. They're going to, let's put it. So six, um, verse two. Do you not know that the saints will judge the worlds? And if the worlds will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Three, verse three. Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this? Right. So you're saying we are going to be judging the worlds. We are going to be judging. Them. Daniel 7, he talks about the kingdoms being given to the Son of Man and to the saints. And that he will rule with him for one thought. Daniel 7, um, talking about this kingdom, and he says here, Verse 
27. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people. The saints of the Most High, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Also, we go back to verse 21. Uh, verse 22, until the ancient days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. And in so uh, we will rule and reign with Jesus. We we'll possess the kingdom here on. So I think something on earth. Right? We will when we will see yeah? Revelation 19 when Jesus comes back. He establishes his kingdom here on earth. And Zechariah 14, Jesus lands on the Mount of Olives. His feet touches Mount of Olives. He comes right back there. And he establishes his kingdom on the It's very clear. All right, let me take up this question here in the chat. Uh, Nina asked the question, the people who are going to face tribulation will turn to the Lord because of the rapture that is taking place or will they realize then how will they hear the gospel? So Nina's question is, how will people come to faith during the tribulation? We will see that the gospel is being preached uh, throughout the tribulation. Uh, many One is, of course, like we mentioned, uh, there will be a lot of resources that we are leaving behind, which people will, you know, people can read their Bibles, they can read Bible online, uh, Bible app will still be there. Uh, all the media, was, people can go and listen. So that is one thing. Second, there will be 144,000 Jews. Whom God has raised, uh, Revelation chapter 7, there will be 144,000 Jews who will be serving Jesus during the seven years of tribulation. So they will be proclaimers of the gospel. Uh, we also see in uh, uh, Revelation, I think it's um, Revelation, uh, I forget the exact chapter, but I think it's Revelation 13, but uh, when, when, when there are four angels and God is assigned, and there will be one angel, who, uh, and these angels will be proclaiming the gospel, the everlasting gospel, uh, to the people of the nations. So one angel will be announcing to people, do not receive the mark of the peace. Another angel will be proclaiming the gospel to believe in Jesus. That's another way people are going to hear the gospel. So there will be numerous ways by which people are going to hear the gospel. The Holy Spirit will be moving on the earth during the seven years of tribulation. Uh, because these 144,000 Jews will be anointed by the Holy Spirit. Uh, we'll have two witnesses, Revelation chapter 11, two witnesses proclaiming Jesus for the second half of the tribulation. So they will also be doing signs and wonders and pointing people to Jesus. So there are many ways that people will be hearing the gospel and being saved during the tribulation. Okay. All right, so we'll get to all these things step by step. Uh, today is kind of giving us an overview, a little taste of things we're going to get into. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Um, let's get into it. Um, let's go with chapter one. We'll uh, just get started. In chapter one, um, I just want uh, us to focus a little bit on the Bible as a prophetic book, right? That means uh, the Bible, this, when the Bible gives us prophecy, it is prophecy that is very reliable. Okay, why? Because we can look back and say, have other prophecies in the Bible been fulfilled? Hey, yeah, there are so many prophecies in the Bible which have been fulfilled. Therefore, all the prophecies that are speaking about future events can also be considered as reliable. Okay. Because you're looking at, if it has such a good record of prophecies that have been fulfilled, we know that things that have been spoken about the future will be fulfilled. So the Bible is a prophetic book. Right? So, how did these people prophesy? First Peter chapter 1, verse 10 to 12. 
It says this verse 11, the spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand about the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. That means the Holy Spirit was moving in the hearts and lives of these prophets. And he was giving them information beforehand. Example about the sufferings of Christ. Christ would come, he would suffer, he would die. And the glories that would come after. So, how did these prophets prophesy? They were not sitting and writing fiction. Let me write some fiction, some stories, make up stories. No, no. no. The Holy Spirit was telling them beforehand about Jesus and what will come after that the glories that will fall. Say, same thing in 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. Peter says, no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So you must understand, the whole Holy Spirit is the one who gave this information to the prophets. That's why they can be so, uh, they could write about these things, they could, you know, speak about them. So, and again, the, 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 uh, I didn't do this counting, but there is you know, Hugh Ross who, who wrote, you know, he, he said that there are approximately 2,500 prophecies. 2,000 which have already been fulfilled. Uh, there are uh, uh, 10,035 verses about the return of the Lord uh, and so on. So there are numerous prophecies, uh, different kinds of things prophesied in the Bible. So much of them have already been fulfilled. Some are going to be fulfilled. There are so many verses that are talking about the return of Jesus. So, let me just look at, you know, um, some examples of prophecies. 400 years, the first one is about the Egyptian slavery. God spoke to Abraham. He said, Abraham, your descendants will be in Egypt for 400 years. Then I will bring them out. So you can imagine, Abraham, he's telling his people, hey, God told me, our people will be in Egypt in slavery for 400 years and God will bring us out. He never lived to see that he died. But 400 years later, God brought them out of Egypt. That was fulfilled. Similarly, about Babylonian captivity, Jeremiah prophesied, you know, you, you will serve the king of Babylon 70 years, Jeremiah 25, verse 11. And then he says, after 70 years are completed, I will cause you to return to this place. So Jeremiah prophesied, you will be in Babylon 70 years. After 70 years, I will bring you back to your place. Did it happen? Yeah. Perfect. Right? So very specific. 70 years, they'll come back. It was fulfilled. Another, and this is just a few examples. Um, 150 years before Persian king Cyrus was born, Isaiah, he, so 150 years before, in Isaiah 44, verse 28, he's saying, Cyrus is giving a name to Cyrus. You will do whatever I please. And you will tell Jerusalem, be built. You will tell temple, foundation be laid. Now, this is 150 years before this man is born. Isaiah is giving the name, and he's saying what this man will do. He will, he's saying this man will tell Jerusalem to be built and temple to be established. He repeats, Isaiah 45, verse 1, Cyrus, 
I'm holding your right hand, and I will help you. you know, God is telling this man, Sarah. He's a Persian king. 150 years later, in Ezra chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it says, In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, for the Lord spoke by the mouth of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, he had said, 70 years will be in, in captivity. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus and he told, he made a proclamation. Build the temple at Jerusalem. Go back to your land, rebuild it. So that means Cyrus fulfilled what Isaiah and Jeremiah had promised. Jeremiah had said, 70 years will be there, you will come back. Isaiah prophesied by name. Cyrus, you will rebuild. You tell Jerusalem to be rebuilt and the temple to be rebuilt. And that's exactly what he did. So prophecy being fulfilled. Another important prophecy, especially concerning the end times, and I mentioned this earlier, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 25 and 26, um, the angel Gabriel is speaking to Daniel. This is a little difficult to understand, but actually, when you, when you look at it carefully, it, it's pretty easy. Now you can understand it. He says, Daniel chapter 9, verse 25 and 26, Gabriel tells Daniel, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. Seven weeks plus 62 weeks is equal to 69. 7 plus 62. There'll be 69 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublesome times. That means Jerusalem will be built you know, in troublesome times. And after the 62 weeks, that is 7 plus 62, after that, Messiah will be cut off, but not for him. So what is, to put it in simple English, it, it seems very difficult to understand. What he's saying, from the time the decree is given for people to go back and rebuild Jerusalem, till the Messiah, there'll be 69 weeks. Now, what is 69 weeks? Each week represents a period of seven years. So 69 times 7 is equal to 483 years. And historically, after King Cyrus gave the decree, telling people, go back, build Jerusalem, build your temple, till Jesus began his mission was crucified, it is so historically, we don't know the exact number of years right? because history means now we have to recreate that, that information. We don't know exactly, but they would if you read historical general history information that we are 450, 500, some around that time. Thank you. But we know Gabriel said 69 times 483. However, this was actually fulfilled. So imagine, Gabriel is telling, there will be 483 years from the time Cyrus is telling you to go back and rebuild Jerusalem till Messiah, till Jesus is crucified. 483 years. Understand it? So this is fulfilled. Now, um, History, that means historically, we don't know exact year, you know, when was King Cyrus born and all that. We, we reconstruct history because like, this has happened more, you know, we are in 2024 or we are in 2080. This happened about uh, 700 BC, you know, so we don't know exact year, but we have roughly approximately, we say, yeah, it was fulfilled. Now we can say with confidence it was fulfilled exactly 483 years because Gabriel said 69 times 7, 483 years. 
Prince of the application. But this is true. So, so this is where I will be explained. There is, he says, um, I, I, I didn't put this verse here. Um, the, the previous verse. Uh, he's, uh, Gabriel says, I've come to speak to you about 70 years for your people. Um, so we go to Daniel chapter 9. Let me just uh, give you this. So Daniel chapter 9, uh, uh, verse 24. So this is verse 24. It's not uh, here in the notes. But Daniel 9, 24, the angel said, Gabriel says, 70 weeks are determined for your people. For your holy city, 70 weeks. So he says, I'm come to talk to you about 70 weeks. That means 490 years, 70 times 7, 490 years. So he has said what will happen in the first 69 weeks. The first 69 weeks is the time from King Cyrus to Messiah being killed. That is 69 weeks. So one last one is left. The 70th week is left. That 70th week will be fulfilled in the tribulation. So that's why the tribulation is called Daniel's 70th week. You got it now. Because in Daniel 9 24, it says 70 weeks are determined for your people. So 69 weeks is given from Cyrus to Messiah, 69 weeks. Seven weeks, 70th week is left. When will that happen? Now, he says the 70 weeks are determined for your people. That means this is only concerned, this is, I'm speaking concerning Israel, concerning your people and your city, Jerusalem. That's why we are saying in the 70th week, the focus will be on Israel and Jerusalem. Because he said 70 weeks are for your people and for your Holy City, Jerusalem. The church is taken out of the way. The focus now shifts back to Israel and church in the 70th week. It's confusing. All right. Number five. There are many prophecies of Jesus. We've only mentioned a few, which we know are literally fulfilled. Right? He would be born of the woman. He would be born to the line of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He would be an descendant of Judah. He would be born in Bethlehem. He would be born of a virgin. He would be in Egypt for some time. He would grow up in Nazareth. He would be betrayed by his close friend. He would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. He would be crucified. Uh, no bones would be broken. Uh, people would cast lots for his clothes. He would live again. So many of these prophecies about Jesus himself. All fulfilled. Another example, uh, I think it came out, the destruction of the temple. Yeah. Jesus said, so when Jesus was here, he said, I'm telling you, not one of these stones will be on, on top of each other. Forty years later, the temple was destroyed. The AD 17, destroyed. About the regathering of Israel, you know, the prophets have been speaking, you know, God will bring back the people into their own land, in their own place. And uh, they were dispersed many times, but finally in, uh, you know, 1948, they were all brought back and Israel became a nation. So almost 3,500 years, you know, prophecy time period. And it was literally perfect. Right? So let's pause here. We will pick up from here next week. So the whole point now is was to say that the, the prophecies of the Bible can be really trusted. We can trust it. This is some examples where prophecies have been fulfilled. So we can trust. All right. We will pause here. We will um, continue this.
and uh, hopefully as we explain more and more uh things will become clear for us okay and uh, something can close in front but what all the okay <laughs> so i'm get this before Thank you, Ron. See you next week.